Hey, it's Noel Williams, August 27th, 2023. We're going to try to start posting about stuff in general, but of course, the thing that got me motivated again is, is the dreaded COVID. It, it's back, but it's not really back because it cycles at the end of each summer. I mean, the whole reason our task force got started in, um, gosh, was that 20? Um, it was in September because the cases were coming up. They've come up every, at this time of year, um, for now, 20, 21, 22, now for the fourth straight year, and it's definitely seasonal, and there's a lot of theories as to why. Um, there's a, the current most popular variant that everyone's like freaking out about for some completely, not everyone, but all the umbrella medical organizations and hospital groups to an extent, um, is EG5 or the Iris Omicron variant. Um, there's no data to support that it's more deadly, dangerous, or anything at all. Dr. Prasad at Stanford did this really funny post this last week, and he said, this is the slide showing any evidence that we need to be worried about this. Um, and he then showed a blank slide. Um, so that's pretty typical. Um, there's a second variant that they're also very much uh, scared about, where there's been one case so far in the US and a few cases in the Netherlands and one case in Britain. The BA2-86 which could be even more transmissible and more scary. It's the next version of monkeypox. Okay, I mean, and remember monkeypox, how terrified we needed to be about monkeypox, and one person ended up dying who was an older male AIDS patient who had multi-system um, debilitation, and he was in his 70s. So um, that was the only U.S. death that last time I checked. So again, we have to keep motivations behind these things. There's a new vaccine coming out. Um, that they're rushing now because of this potential variant. Um, we have Scott Gottlieb, the former uh, FDA administrator under the first part of the Trump administration, but he stepped down right before COVID, um, who's now on the Pfizer board of directors and is hired by CVS to go online and tell everyone how um, important that this is. And then talking to people who work at CVS, um, that is the whole focus is to sell COVID vaccines there. Um, and it's disturbing to them. Uh, and it's disturbing maybe just a lot of us who, who question the narrative about these vaccines are safe um, and beneficial. There's no data supporting either, and there's a, there's a lot of data accumulating. There may be some problems with them. Look at the all-cause mortality rates across the world in the United States, France, England, the Netherlands, uh, or excuse me, Sweden and Norway, and then um, I believe also Turkey. Uh, the all-cause mortality rates are significantly up. The cancer rates certainly appear to be significantly up. And if you take care of a lot of cancer patients and talk to oncologists regularly like I do, they definitely feel there's something going on. Um, and I don't think COVID causes cancer. I think the immune changes and the immune inflammation has a tendency to maybe it could potentially accelerate it. We don't know yet, but we need to study it. But, but who knows? Because we don't study that. Um, at the FDA or CDC still. So rather than running out and getting um, unproven and probably reasonably unnecessary COVID vaccines, and that's my personal opinion, and I'm allowed to give a personal opinion and a professional opinion because I read journal articles, and there's no trials showing any kind of benefit that are randomized controlled trials. Um, they're all statistical analysis that are meaningless. Um, that's where I am on that. Likewise, the flu vaccines, if you look at the statistics, are meaningless. But, you know, again, um, but again, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. Get your HPV vaccine. Get your meningococcal vaccine when you're a teenager. Get your hepatitis vaccines. Um, all the standard ones like that, but those upper respiratory tract infection vaccines are just really, um, the data is hard to look at and say, oh, we should be doing this. I think it's the opposite. But... There's that. So that's one thing. So we're going to talk about what we can do, but I also want to go over a few things we don't need to do. Um, people keep on bringing masking up. There's a trend of um, it could be helpful. No, there's no good data showing that it really is helpful. There's good data showing that it's not helpful, um, but you know we don't ever acknowledge that. And it's always going to be micron size for me um, that if the micron size of the viral particles one the two microns and the smallest pore size in an N95 mask is five microns. It's going to get through. It's a gnat trying to be stopped by a chain link fence, which we've talked about. So if you want to wear a mask because you're a high-risk person, 
I'm totally on board with you doing that. If it makes you feel better, go. The only kind of mask that could ever help you would really be a very well fit N95, but again, I would not depend on that. I think depending on things that give false hope but don't do anything is silly, um, but again, that's me. What can we do? Well, there's things we can do, but the thing we need to do is figure out ventilation in closed spaces because that's the one thing we know data-wise that does have a big impact. Number two, how about just supporting the immune system? I read an article, and it was from some C uh, CDC people um, basically saying, well, you got to eat nutritious food. The nutritional value of food in the United States is, for, is a joke. I mean, that's the problem. We have so much illness. I mean, our, our overall health is decreasing every year here because our, the food we eat is lousy. So again, you need a good multivitamin. The purpose of a multivitamin is to support the mitochondria. If anyone wants to feel well and do well, keep your mitochondria in good shape. That prevents diseases. It can keep your immune, in, immune system in shape. Vitamin D, 5,000 units a day. A fish oil a day. Those are your, your basic things. And then if you want to kind of overachieve, add 15 milligrams of zinc daily. Just do that basic stuff. There, and I think that's going to be your best bet to fight COVID or flu or any cold virus. And so that's what I would always have you focus on. Um, Kim, anything else? Or is that about the whole thing? I'm not, I don't want to be too politically incorrect because, yeah. you know, that's one of the reasons I stopped posting because it just seems silly to get everything taken off for being honest. Um, but I don't think anyone can disagree that good nutrition prevents cancer because it does, because all cancer is a mitochondrial dysfunction, and it helps with all disease processes. And in the fall, in the flu and cold season, it makes sense to be taking your vitamins. So that's what I would say. And that's it. Take care. Good night.